Hello everyone and welcome to this Living Local special. I'm Ken Watley. And I'm Shayla Reeves. July was a month long celebration for Nine on Your Side as we showcase the uniqueness of our area. The Nine on Your Side team made stops in 15 counties that make up the East, highlighting just some of what makes our home so special. And we begin here in historic downtown New Bern, a place rich in history with many attractions that bring in thousands of visitors each year. One of those attractions, an art walk. It happens on the second Friday of every month, highlighting local artists. WNCT's Courtney Allen has more on this growing event and why it's so important to the community. Lisa Bisbee Lentz spends most of her days painting at her gallery, the Greater Good Gallery on Craven Street. Things get brighter as they get closer to the foreground. The artist moved to New Bern in 2010. How I did it was I set up my easel on the sidewalk and I would paint on Saturday mornings for about almost two years. And that's how I met a lot of my creative friends. By 2013, she achieved her dream of opening her own gallery, showcasing not only her work, but the work of those creative friends. When like-minded people get together, it's like time and space just disappear. She says art is what connected her to her new city, and now she connects her gallery to others through the Newburn Art Walk. We sit here and we showcase how a painting comes to life and people get to watch us paint. And then we show them tips and techniques and tricks. The art walk has grown substantially since Bisbee Lens first started. There's so many locations on there now, it's insane. 36 locations to be exact, all within a couple blocks of each other. It's so compact, it has a small town feel. Jonathan Berger with Bank of the Arts says other than galleries, there are restaurants, florists, and retail stores. A lot of them run specials the night of Art Walk. They, uh, they're also supporters. We have a third of the population of Greenville, yet we have at least double the galleries. For such a little town to have this much creativity. It's just, it's amazing to me. An art walk gives people an opportunity to experience the sense of community. About 70 miles north of New Bern is Washington County, and it's also where our very own Ken Watling is from. And there's a lot of rich history in my hometown of Plymouth. We're talking some of that history with a walk on the wild side along the Roanoke River, including a stop at a museum that's unlike any other in eastern North Carolina. It's hard to drive through downtown Plymouth and not spot the Roanoke River Lighthouse. Many are familiar with the lighthouses that stretch up and down our coast, but there was a time when river lights were just as important to sailors. This lighthouse is actually the second of three built in the same spot on the Albemarle Sound. The first one of this one caught fire after being out there about seven months, and the second one... It survived like tremendous into about 1885, and then it was lost... Um, to an ice flow and, they, and the last one came in and was built, served until about 1950s. The current day Roanoke River Lighthouse is actually a replica of one that was farther downriver back in the 1800s. It was one of over a dozen in the Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds that helped light the way for sailors along the inner banks. There was a tremendous amount of traffic that came in and out of here. I, I always call it Highway 64, 1885, particularly in the fall with all the crops coming off. This, this was a very active town. What once served as a navigation tool is now a beacon for a small town redefining itself as a destination. We go for the wow. You know, I want people to come in and go, wow. Wow is certainly a reaction to Plymouth's God's Creation Wildlife Museum. They said, I can't believe I'm in North Carolina. That's the other good thing I like to hear. I want to take them, take them away. I've been hunting all my life, and uh, I saw the opportunity to create a, a, a public venue uh, where we could educate people about the, the variety and magnificent of God's creation. We've got animals from Africa to Alaska and points in between. And much closer to home. This is the black bear portion of the museum. I thought it was important to do the black bear museum because uh, of the educational uh, aspect. We've got the highest black bear density in the world on the Albemarle Pamlico Peninsula. Even people that aren't into hunting and people that aren't um, really a fan of, of taxidermy, there's a lot of different diversity here and um, it's, 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 it's educational, it's neat, it's fun. And just across the river from Plymouth sits Bertie County, a place known for barbecue, peanuts and petting zoos, but there's something new yet old in Windsor that's bringing out new visitors. WNCT's Connor Kick shows us tree houses on the Kashai River that'll take you back to the good old days. 
Remember when you were growing up and you always wanted that tree house in your backyard and mom and dad would never let you get it? Well, you can get that experience here in Windsor in Bertie County where the Cashi River Tree Houses can provide you with that lifelong childhood memory. We're off and on the road about an hour north of Greenville to Windsor, North Carolina, a small town of only 3,600 people not many know of, but locals say it's a hidden gem. And one of its crown jewels is a half mile from Town Hall and down this 400 foot dock where you'll find the Cashi River Tree Houses. Opening only 16 months ago, the houses were built on the reality show Treehouse Guys. So yeah, we're good to go, so when do you want to start? After planning, permits, and funding through grants, the Treehouses welcomed their first guest in April of 2017. But this project wasn't met without some criticism. Y'all are crazy to put tree houses in the middle of the swamp down there. Who do you think is going to use them? While people from dozens of states and all over North Carolina made their way to check for themselves, changing some of those opinions. Some of those same people that told me we were crazy they told me that y'all were smarter than we were. Now when they say tree houses, they really do mean tree houses. Both of these houses have a base built out of a tree and some of them even have one running through it. And why are people so attracted to these tree houses? Everybody's looking something a little bit different but it all results in, in these tree houses. A peaceful, relaxing touch of nature tucked away in Bertie County. We're a unique community uh, that probably hadn't been discovered yet. And if you want to stay in one of these tree houses, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Both of the houses are currently booked all the way through September. So if you want your chance to stay in one for the fall, act fast. In Bertie County, Connor Kick, Matt on your side. Coming up, we travel to Beaufort County for a look at what stands out there. More Living Local when we come back. Welcome back to our Living Local special. We continue in Beaufort County in the city of Washington at what's known as one of its crown jewels, the waterfront. It's located right here along the beautiful Pamlico River. Washington used to be a harbor port dating back to Revolutionary War times, becoming one of the main trade ports here in the east. It's not just for viewing. You can take river tours with the North Carolina Estuarium. Another spot to visit in Beaufort County is the town of Bath. As one of the oldest towns in the state, Bath has many historical markers, but maybe it's most famously known for the pirate Blackbeard. WNCT's Carrigan has more. Bath has a lot of, a lot of history you know, uh, right at our back door. The town of 260 may be small in number, but not small in historical value. Bath being um, over, you know, 300 years old, we have a lot of the historical homes, so it's kind of like going to a little small Williamsburg. Bath is not only famous for its rich colonial style landmarks, but also for its history with the famous pirate Blackbeard. And keeping this history alive is a top priority for those who live here. One, to preserve the historical nature of our town, and one, to uh, preserve the natural beauty of our town. The town not only values its history, but family and community. Well, to me, it's second to none. I have grown up here, and uh, my grandsons would be the sixth generation of our family to grow up right here on the same street here in Bath in the same waterway. So to me, I take pride in our community. Something even the younger generation of Bath can agree with as well. Well, my favorite thing to do is ride my bike and my razor up and down the road, and I like to go to all the restaurants at town, and I like to ride my boat all around. Still to come, we're living local in Edgecombe County. We're taking you to the historic town of Princeville when we come back. Our next Living Local stop brings us here to the historic Edgecombe County town of Princeville. In a town that seems to be plagued by flooding and storm damage, there's a voice of hope. Our Brandon Truett sat down with Milton Bullock. He's a member of the legendary 1950s group The Platters, and he calls Princeville home. The smooth, classic sounds of the 1960s echo through the Rocky Mount train station. It's therapeutic for me to come in here and to do this for the fans. The man behind the mic, Milton Bullock. He's a member of the chart-topping group, The Platters. We meet such guys as Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Pat Boone, 
Roy Hamilton. For some, it might come as a surprise that this man was born and raised in Princeville 78 years ago. Well, this is my home. A home that's had its ups and downs. And it has always been a struggling community, and it never did or never has reached its full potential, not even three quarters of its potential. After touring around the world, Bullock followed his roots back home. It's where his mother first taught him to sing in his hometown church when he was just a boy. We didn't have the amenities of having a park like other communities, once again, due to who we were and where we were. Bullock joined the Platters in 1961, four years after meeting the group in New York. Once I got with them, it was all an uphill ride. The group is credited for breaking racial and gender barriers in pop music. They were the first African-American group to become a worldwide phenomenon. One reason, a strategic move to keep the group's faces off the album cover. They wouldn't put your picture on it because if you did, the DJ had already been told, you shove that particular color of the label over to the side. It was their voices that radiated over the airwaves. And when the white folks heard it, they fell in love with the songs and man, they started booking us. And next thing you know, we have interwoven into their hearts. And when they saw us, they say, damn, these are keepers. We got to keep them. Every other Wednesday, you'll find toes tapping and lip singing, taking you back to where you were. When you first heard the sound of a generation. Bullock is now working on a new movie set to be filmed partially in eastern North Carolina. He's also writing a song set to be released along with this movie. Now for more information on his future projects, you can check it all out on this article at WNCT.com. In Princeville, Brandon Truitt, not on your side. Still ahead, we go racing in Martin County. We take you to a racetrack in Robinsonville where there's no shortage of a crowd. We want to take you back to Martin County for our Living Local series. And on any given Saturday, you'll find huge crowds here at the East Carolina Motor Speedway in Robertsonville. WNCT's Nicole Newman reports. It's the height of entertainment for race fans in the East. Uh, my family's been coming here for 30 years. And on a Saturday night, you can find the people of Robertsonville and surrounding towns at the East Carolina Motor Speedway. You can actually see everything, all the racing at this one, so we enjoy seeing that. The Speedway opened in 1990 and over the past 28 years has been ground zero in helping to play a part in launching the careers of big time racing names. We've had everybody from Dale Earnhardt Jr. race here to Ernie Irvin, uh, you name it. A lot of guys that you see on Sunday get their start right here. In fact, we've got one young one gentleman who is part of the NASCAR Camp at World Truck Series that won North Carolina State Champion at this track who has just made his debut in the uh, big leagues. It's something that isn't lost on up and coming drivers. I have been racing here um, on and off for about three years, I believe. Um, this is our first full season here, though. Since 2014, the Speedway's been under the ownership of Wayne Perry. He owns a Chevrolet dealership up in Elizabeth City, so he uh, that kind of helped bring in the uh, NASCAR uh, home track series. Nine on Your Side was in attendance for the Speedway's annual Red, White, and Boom. It's one of the Speedway's largest annual events. Things got started with the drivers bringing their cars on the track to meet and greet their fans. And before the racing began, recording artist Brian Mayer entertained the crowd. Then it was time to get down to business. With the event living up to the boom in its name with this crash during the bombers race, much to the crowd's delight. From the track to the sky, it was then time for a spectacular fireworks display. I don't know about you, but there's no way else I'd rather be than right here tonight. After the fireworks, it was back to racing and back to making plans to meet at the Speedway for the next race. Don't go away. 
there's still more living local to come. Coming up after the break, we take a look at some of the other hidden gems we visited in the east this summer. That includes stops along the Crystal Coast, 4th of July celebrations, and some of our favorite popular local eating spots. WNCT's Living Local Tour took us all over eastern North Carolina. We saw many amazing things, so many we can't show you all of them in just 30 minutes. And here's a look at some of the other stops on our Living Local Tour. From Pitt County to Onslow County, eastern North Carolina has a lot to offer. This time of year is the time to come and just enjoy the water, jump in the water, cool off. Uh, and then if you're really out to explore, we have three over three miles of hiking trails. Uh, it's one of the best hiking trails in eastern North Carolina to come out and explore. And then come to the fort. The uh, cultural history here is unmatched. You can learn all basically the whole lesson in U.S. history. Our first stop, Fort Macon State Park in Carteret County. The Civil War era fort is located in Atlantic Beach. It offers opportunities to learn about history and nature. This summer was all about celebrating America's 242nd birthday. In Pitt County, the city of Greenville hosted a large fireworks display in the town common. The 35th annual Freedom Festival attracted crowds to Onslow County. Aboard Camp Lejeune, Base Fest honored military service members and their families with a free concert. I can't think of a better place to be as, a, as an American, right? You're here on a base that deploys thousands of Marines overseas uh, all the time, who fight our wars, who, who go over there and do what we tell them we ask them to do. Back in Carteret County, entertainment attracted large crowds to the Alive at Five summer concert series in Moorhead City. Filling a void is the goal of this thriving community garden in the small Beaufort County town of Aurora. The area is considered a food desert. The only grocery store closed a few years ago. The garden provides fresh food for families and offers an opportunity for neighbors to get to know each other. Eastern North Carolina is known for its beautiful beaches and part of Pender County is a perfect getaway. Find miles of uncrowded sandy beaches in North Topsail Beach and more along the Crystal Coast. Check out 5,000 different kinds of animals, species of fish, sea turtles, and sharks at the North Carolina Aquarium. Located in Pine Knoll Shores, the aquarium's mission is to educate and entertain. A stop in Pamlico County highlights the town of Oriental. It's known as the sailing capital of North Carolina. Tucked away in Lenore County, an important piece of Civil War history. Sitting at 158 feet long and 34 feet wide, the remains of the CSS News. Visit Jones County for a look at the historic Brock Mill House. The original 17th century home was a key addition for farmers in Trenton. And what's Eastern North Carolina without the food, especially the barbecue? One restaurant on Main Street in Farmville is known for something more. Cheese biscuits. Thank you for watching WNCT's Living Local Special. I'm Ken Watling. And I'm Shayla Reeves. We'll see you next time.